really, really important pair of races here. As we've said, Scott Bugner, Max Edmondson sharing that second row of the grid. There are 24 points between them in the championship in Scott Bugner's favour. So crucial here that Max Edmondson tries to beat him, even if it's just by position or so, start chipping away the points advantage uh, for the championship leader and uh, hope maybe that something goes wrong for Scott, who's had a pretty good so far. He has yet to finish lower than fifth in any of the eight races that we've had so far. He's only been off the podium in three of those races. A truly remarkable season for Scott. Can he keep that going here at Croft? Then we're waiting for the uh, red lights to go on. There we go. Getting ready then into the final countdown for round number nine of the VRRC Civic Cup. Left-hand side of the shot, the yellow and white car is Elliot Dalton Ayres, alongside in the white and red of Max Bird. Who gets off the line best? Who gets into Clervo first? Time to find out. Lights go out and a very even start from both of the front row men, actually. Down towards Clervo, they will run two by two. Keep an eye to Bugner and Edmondson already nearly banging doors as they head into the first corner. Max Bird getting his nose ahead. There's a car off in the background, but it's side by side for the lead through turn one. And Bird trying to hang it tough around the outside of Elliot Dalton Ayres. There's a hip check. Out wide will go Max Bird. Bugner has got himself or stayed ahead of Max Edmondson and crucially gets into second place. So the championship leader gaining ground and Edmondson stuck down in fourth. Yep, yeah, Bugner did everything he needed to there. You can see something was going to explode in front of him between Dalton Ayres and Bird, and indeed it did. So as he goes for the normal racing line, Elliot Dalton Ayres goes slightly defensive. I think that's Max Bird trying to look up the inside, but it's more, again, to stave off the attacks from behind. The likes of Max Edmondson, who's that bouncing around in the background as well? Is that Max or is that Joel Last? I can't quite tell because they're side by side for fourth position. No, as they go through the Jim Clark Esters, it's still Max Edmondson in fourth place. Joel Lask, of course, teammate to Scott Bugner. So if he can get himself ahead of Max Edmonds, and he's not only gaining himself championship points, but doing his teammate the world of good and is very late on the brakes into Sunny. He's too late. Goes out wide of the inside goals. Lask and Axelson pass the pair of them, maybe. Somehow Edmondson finds a route around the outside through Sunny out. And he's held on to fourth. I can't believe that. Somehow Edmondson's still in fourth place. But that was a really, really close moment. And I think he knew that the attack was coming there from Joel Lask. Now, speaking of attacks, the race leaders into the hairpin together. Dalton Air still leads the way. But Bugner wants the lead. And I'm intrigued here, Jack, to see just how aggressive Scott Bugner feels he has to be. He's got the points lead already. But if he feels he's got the pace for a race victory, how hard is he willing to push for that? Well, the problem is if he doesn't get past Dalton Ayres, Bird will be very motivated to uh, to push through and attack Dalton Ayres, which means he'll dispatch a Bugner probably any which way he feels appropriate. Then all of a sudden, Edmondson's going to take advantage as the car's again hopping around more than your favourite beer. But Scott Bugner has gone through into the race lead on Elliot Dalton Ayres. Max Bird all of a sudden has Dalton Ayres back in his sights. And Max Edmondson's heart sinks because not only is he still languishing down in fourth place, but of course that battle he had with Lask and Axelson has dropped them away slightly uh, from the leading trio. So Edmondson now needs to pull his socks up here and gain some places, go after Scott Bugner and limit the damage being done in the points. Further back, Mark Hughes here around the outside uh, of Reese Bell through Tower Corner. This is the scrap for 14th place. And just ahead, Brad Smith there has Andy Carroll behind him. Kyle Felvis ahead. Felvis inside the top 10, but again, struggling a little bit uh, compared to his HFT uh, teammates as they head towards Sunny for the second time. Yeah, but we keep mentioning Kyle, and he's probably sick to death of it, really, that he doesn't like the front-wheel drive as Brad Smith goes very, very wide, managed to get back onto the circuit, probably lose a position to Andy Dorman, but just like we saw Edmondson actually before, I think the outside line and hitting the grass isn't the end of the world because he does retain that position. Uh, so Brad Smith losing a little bit of time and goes very wide actually into the final complex. Just about holds on to it though, doesn't he? Um, just behind Andy Carroll, Dorman up ahead of him, then Keller Belvis. Uh, but at the front, you're absolutely right. Scott Bugner in the lead, Elliot Dalton in second, Max Bird in third, uh, Max Edmondson in fourth, and Eric Axelson. I was about to scream Eric Axelson's name when I thought he was going to take two positions through Sunny Owl. He didn't quite manage it, but still a good showing in fifth. Yeah, it was strange, wasn't it? The momentum seemed to be on the outside line, but you're right. It absolutely looked like he was going to uh, pick the pockets there of uh, Max Edmondson and Joel Lask ahead. He got past Lask, who ends up uh, dropping down to sixth. And actually, that's not bad news if you're Max Edmondson because it just relieves a little bit of the pressure uh, on your shoulders. He's dropping back from the leading three, though, Edmondson. Doesn't moment seem to have the pace uh, of those leading three cars. There he is, look, the man who 
really was the dominant force over the first three rounds of the championship, winning race one at all three of the first weeks of racing. But it was his reversed grid performances where he had a 14th, a 7th and a 4th and now an 11th last time at Silverstone. That really uh, is where he's dropped the points to Bugner, who, as I said, has never been out of the top five all season long. Andy Dorman was one of the stars at Silverstone. He actually took that car on pole position uh, on the Silverstone National Circuit before finishing fifth in that opening race. He currently runs in 10th position just behind Carl Felvers. Oh, and there's a shunt heading into Barcroft. Yeah, and I believe that's with Brad's, no, Kenny Press and John Jones potentially. Uh, Mark Hughes, I think, is currently just joining. Oh, look at that. Brad Smith's steering wheel is absolutely, maybe he's turning right whilst having the steering wheel turning left. That's uh, not how Civic Cups are designed. It looks more like a NASCAR setup right now, doesn't it, unfortunately? This is Reese Bell, 13th position. Does Reese have any kind of damage? It doesn't look like it, potentially, but there was a big amount of contact. And as I said, I think John Jones and Kenny Press were the two drivers that were involved. That looks like uh, Reese Bell's front bumper and Kenny Press's rear bumper and front bumper all seem a little bit damaged. I think it's safe to say that there is... Um, it, it wasn't ideal that uh, that we, we can't call it e either way because we didn't see it, but probably one for the stewards afterwards. Yes, and uh, those uh, friendly tyre stacks on the apexes of the corners just waiting to uh, turn a minor incident into an enormous pile-up, unfortunately. Right, back with the leading trio. And Max Bird following Elliot Dalton Ayres, who he's done with following Scott Bugner. What a lunge that was into tower corner. And Dalton Ayres back into the lead of the race. Got the car stopped as well. That was a beautiful move, that from Dalton Ayres. That is how you make a dive bomb and you make it cleanly. As long as you're confident that you're going to stop for the apex and not bounce into the side uh, of the car you're trying to overtake, then that is a perfectly legitimate move to make. And now that rather puts Bugner on the back foot here. Max Bird trying to get to the inside. Uh, couldn't quite make it stick through Barcroft, but that was a lovely bit of driving that from Dalton Ayres, and it gets him the race lead. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I mean, he's probably got some, a load cell in his pedal or something because that was really nicely on the brakes, and he bled off and actually managed to make the corner um, on the exit as well really nicely, which sometimes can be a little bit tricky as uh, Scott Bugner sends it into the complex through the left-hand side, managed to open the corner up nicely uh, to try and get into the final corner without any kind of attacks from Max Bird, who goes for that wide entry and late apex, and that's because they've got about a second gap between themselves and fourth place man Max Edmondson who can't seem to live with the pace of the battling top three at the moment. Um, they haven't battled that hard, Andy. I mean, they might end up losing a little bit of time further into the race, but they're working smart here, aren't they, the top three? He's, I think, well, they are, sort of. They are fighting each other, of course, slightly, but Edmondson just doesn't seem to have the pace. He's carrying this 40 kilos of... Um, of ballast in the car, the handicap ballast. He's actually been heavy. He was at 50 kilos last week, so he's dropped uh, 10 kilos, which is where he was for most of the first half of the season where he was so dominant so not quite sure what the reason is for Edmondson but what he will like is this side-by-side -side racing he's seeing ahead because, because Scott Buckner is answering my question here about how uh, aggressive he's willing to be may have a healthy lead in the points he may currently be on course uh, to outscore his nearest rival again he wants another race win. Bugner with just the one victory so far this season. And he can sense another one. Dalton Ayres back in front of him. Bugner had a real go there around the outside at Tower. He absolutely did. But if I was if I was Bugner, I'd maybe be thinking, although to be fair, he probably doesn't know. But just behind is Axelson going Ooh. through on Edmondson. And that's exactly what I was about to bring up. Bugner can still gain the same points advantage by Axelson overtaking Edmondson than if Bugner went into the lead pretty much. So all he has to do is hope that Eric can do his dirty work, and that seems to be what he's done. Joel Lask, in fact, his teammate, is next up on the agenda and gives him a bit whack up the rear for good measure as well. So Joel Lask throwing his body weight around, shall we say, trying to get past his teammate's championship rival. I know the drivers that we can see sat in the cars are not the real drivers, but I can still almost see the steam emanating from the <laughs> helmet of Max Edmondson's uh, uh, cockpit because not only there did he lose that place to Axelson, but the tap in the tail from Joel Lask will have done Edmondson's blood pressure no good at all. That, uh, in the end, didn't cost him a place. He's still in fifth position, uh, but it did cost him a chance at immediately retaliating against Eric Axels. And again, the fact that Lask is Bugner's teammate will not be lost on Edmondson. He knows the danger that he's in here. He needs to try and get back ahead of Eric Axelson. At the moment, the only saving grace for Edmondson, really, is that he would line up ahead of Bugner for race number two, but so strong have Bugner's reverse grid performances been, I'm not sure that counts for much. No, exactly, and you only, your championship is only as good as your worst results, and I think you mentioned before Edmondson's 
reverse grid results have not been strong. Um, keep in mind as well, it's not just jo Joel Lask's only motivation is not his teammates, obviously. It's his own championship battle where he's seeing his top three uh, top three rivals, Elliot Dalton and Max Bird, well up the road as well. So Lask is a little bit of damage limitation here in this first uh, first race. He's probably hoping that Bugner actually does him a favour by lunging Dalton Ayres in the same way Dalton Ayres lunged him earlier in the race. Here's Edmondson going defensive. Axelson has driven away. Joel Lask, I think, was actually hanging around the outside. I thought he carried enough momentum there. As who's that just going through? Nicky Taylor on Josh Martin. Nicky Taylor, the only front-wheel drive driver, really, in that HFT team. Um, still going wheel-to-wheel -wheel with Josh Martin, who's impressing in this second half. Nicky getting very late with a cutback, and I was about to say it's a really good move, but actually he oh. makes contact not once, but twice, and takes out Andy Dorman in good measure. Oh dear, that was uh, all a little unfortunate, wasn't it? Coming out of the hairpin, it's a common place to have contact there coming off the corner, but uh, in front-wheel drive cars, you you floor the throttle to try and save the slide, but you've got to be careful not to overdo it and spear back into the pack, as we saw there for Josh Martin, who rejoins in ninth position. Taylor 11th, Paul Andy Dorman, who has nothing to do with that, uh, to hand in 13th place. Right, leaders back at tower corner, and Elliot Dalton Ayres defending the inside line there from Scott Bugner. That almost... Um, Bugner up into Max Bird. Can Bird get the switch back here? Carry the speed off tower. That's what he's trying to do, but there's nowhere to go. Whichever side of the road he wants to go, he has a face full of Scott Bugner's number 77 car as they turn into the quick left right at the Jim Clark S's. These top three pretty inseparable. I'm not convinced that Dalton Ayres is fast enough, certainly at the moment, on, on the current evidence to pull away from this group. So it is a genuine fight this for the race lead and one that is not likely to settle down anytime soon. Which is what we like to see, isn't it? We've got nine minutes. We want a nine-minute race, pretty much. We don't want it all to get a bit, a bit boring after an exciting start like we've had. Max Bird, in fact, running very wide. Uh, and also, Delton Air is going very, very wide. I don't think that's his normal line from what we've seen. He's managed to get the car stopped, but almost within touching distance is Bugner to look at the inside, maybe. No, not quite. Bird trying to get that uh, late apex again, but actually doesn't get through the corner quite as nicely as he has done previously. Uh, coming across the line, I'm very interested in seeing Eric Axelson's last lap time as well, actually. So as they come across the line, let's just have a look at it. Yeah, Eric Axelson, half a second quicker than Max Bird. Now, Bird didn't get a brilliant exit. A lot of that might have been the final corner, but it just goes to show that Axelson may well make this a four-way battle within the next five minutes or so. How far? Is, he's got a two-second gap pretty much to make up. If they keep battling like the top three are, that could come down just uh, very, very quickly. Uh, another thing to notice, after that contact that we saw with Nicky Taylor, I believe he slowed up a significant amount to try and let the drivers back through who he made contact with. I can't see whether he's actually managed to, uh, to achieve that margin, but Nicky Taylor now all the way down in 11th place. Yeah, well, he's. Uh, it was Josh Martin with it him was. tangled, and it's Martin that is ahead of him. And now, of course, Taylor trying to get back up the inside at Tower, uh, having given the place back. He has no qualms now about taking it back away, but does so cleanly this time. So good stuff there from Nicky. We've seen him do that before, I seem to remember. Uh, if he's ever had uh, a little bit of uh, contact with drivers on track, he'll always, if he feels it's his fault anyway, uh, will always try to, uh, to give the position back. But he's back into the top 10 now. Poor old Andy Dorman, though, benefits not in the slightest from that. But then, in fairness, it wasn't really Nicky Taylor's fault uh, that Dorman got caught up in it. He's stuck back here fighting for 12th place now with Reese Bell. It's certainly been a bit of a back down to earth after his storming pace at Silverstone. Uh, Andy Dorman found himself back in the midfield here at Croft and the midfield uh, is not always a pleasant place to be. If something's going to go wrong, uh, there's a good chance that if you're running anywhere between about 7th and 12th, you're likely to be in it. Classic touring car racing, really, isn't it? It's a uh, Civic Cup known for breeding touring cars as well as other championships like the Mini Cup Challenge and all these sort of front, other front-wheel drive tin top championships. And uh, it's because they, you basically learn the hard way of how it can go down in touring cars. And that's exactly what we're potentially seeing here in the Civic Cup between that midfield battle as well. But what is brilliant, though, is the top uh, top three uh, are actually battling really well and really cleanly. So it's fantastic to see them. As Andy Carroll tries to hunt down the HFT teammate of Nicky Taylor in the form of Kyle Felbus uh, and obviously Elliot Dalton Ayres uh, in the race lead at the moment. Uh, Kyle Felbus, well, running pretty strong in the top 10, to be honest. This is probably one of his slightly better results, really. He'd probably be quite satisfied with this because at the end of the day, he's picking up some half decent points. His best race one result so far. He had a podium, remember, in the uh, reverse grid race at Alton Park. But Felvis' best race one result is sixth last time at Silverstone. Before that, 
it was 12th. So wow. he's definitely been getting better into the second half of the season. He missed race one uh, at Thruxton, you remember. But uh, yeah, every other week he did struggle in the opening race, sometimes able to then salvage a decent result in race two. But here uh, he's been a bit more competitive right from the get-go, not quite matching that sixth place from Silverstone, but could do by the end of the race. Back through the Jim Clark S's comes the fight for 12th. And now Andy Dorman and Reese Bell uh, have... Um, swapped with Dorman into 13th and they both caught Mark Hughes in the Maximum Networks liveried car, the white and green livery and it looks like Dorman should be able to make this move sticky. Out qualified Hughes and should have the speed to go through. Is he going to do it into the complex corner? Looks up the inside. That's a difficult place to make an overtake though and Mark Hughes is for the time being able to hang on. Goes very wide though and Dorman could have another go through the middle part of the complex. Yep, uh, he's going to go, go for that sort of cutback area but Mark Hughes actually managed to just about cover that off. It does look very weird, doesn't it, with the front bonnet, sorry, front bumpers sort of hanging off the way they are. But look at that, Reese Bell trying to go for the cut back and take advantage of Dorman's late apex. But out of the corner they come, Dorman manages to hold on to that position, get a half decent run. Not going to have this slipstream and be able to lunge into Clairvaux. But um, Hughes and Dorman having a right little good ding dong here, aren't they? And uh, just goes to show wherever you are on the grid, you can have a very entertaining race. As uh, Dorman pretty much ignores track limits completely on the left hand side there, would have absolutely uh, murdered those. Um, track limit markers, shall we call them, and uh, you know, just gets a good run through here. So going into Tower Bend, we could well see a move, but we've actually gone forward to see Joel Lask lining up Max Edmondson. Yeah, this is the closest battle on the track, and it's one of the most important as well. Max Edmondson can't really afford to be throwing away more points here. Fifth position, that's three places behind Scott Bugner, the championship leader. And now he's got Bugner's teammate Lask right behind him, as Jack made the point. Lask is going for a top three place in the championship himself. And actually, is within 20 points of Edmondson, actually, for second. So if Edmondson keeps on dropping points here, we could end up with a really fascinating fight for second in the championship, uh, which maybe allows Bugner to get away. So for multiple reasons here, it's important that Lask makes this move, but it's also important that he does it cleanly make sure there's no contact they've had a couple of little love taps already nothing too significant nothing that's cost uh, max edmondson dearly but it looks like joel last you can see the effect maybe of the slipstream but also the fact that his car is 20 kilos lighter than edmondson you can see that effect down the pit straight he got out of the hairpin better to top speed the car's handling better and of course jack will be looking after its tires better too we're into the final three and a half minutes this is where tire wear starts to tell it absolutely is. We've seen some drivers complaining about it. I think we had a chat to Max Edmondson about it at Brands Hatch and Alton Park. It was quite bad. And we're, it's going to be interesting to see whether that's the same sort of story here at, uh, at Croft as well. Uh, drivers started to come off the boil, basically. And we have started to see that top three battle start to sort of dilute itself, I would say. Eight tenths of a second now, the difference between first and second. Four tenths uh, second to third. So that battle is still potentially on. Eric Axelson, I mentioned about five minutes ago, was actually catching up to the top three. Well, he's absolutely proved me wrong because he's being dropped by the tune of about second, uh, 1.2 seconds since I said that. Nicky Taylor going side by side with Dave Bukey, driver of the round last time out at Silverstone. Nicky getting very bouncy through the Jim Clark S's and just about having to come off the throttle, I believe, to calm the car down and going into Sunny and Sunny Out. Dave Buki holds on to that position, but for how much longer? Nicky Taylor, we know, is keen to get his elbows out wherever, which way is possible, as both of the drivers ahead of him, that's Carl Belvis, his teammate, and Dave Buki, go wide through Sunny Out. Yes, they do. Dave Buki uh, getting his defensive boots on here, but look at that oh. tail around the outside. Almost got the inside uh, for the middle part of the complex. Carl Felbers, meanwhile, is off, and then he's into the side of Josh Martin. Uh, not going quite to plan here for Kyle, it must be said. Back out of the top 10 now, uh, whilst Nicky Taylor goes on the attack a few places up the road, out of the uh, hairpin he goes then. And uh, a bit more damage done to the front of Carl Felbers' his car as we go on to what should be the penultimate lap of the race. They're the leading three, pretty equidistant now. Dalton Air is about eight tenths back to Bugner, about the same back to Bird in third, three seconds back to Eric Axelson. Now, is Eric being caught here by Max Edmondson? I think he might be. Could Edmondson perhaps still have a chance of snatching fourth place? There you can see the gap. It's definitely coming down, isn't it? Whether it's coming down enough, I'm not so sure, but Edmondson will be fueled here by the fact that that green car is getting a little bit closer ahead of him. He just seems to be taking the corners at about 60-70%, doesn't he, Axelson? And he's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, he was catching the top three. And now this pace is just absolutely gone. Even though that last lap time was not too bad. It was still a 36, but it was a 36-7. Whereas Max Edmondson's was a 36-1, a good six-tenths of a second quicker. 
and to be honest, you, you said, Andy, that it might not be enough. And to, I'm, I'm going to half disagree with you, actually. I think Edmondson is really going to struggle to... Uh, sorry, uh, Axelson is really going to struggle to keep Edmondson ahead of him as uh, Nicky Taylor goes very wide trying to take on Dave Buki again. He went very wide. He was giving a bit of assistance in going wide, I think, there. There was definitely a bit of paint traded between the two of them into Sunny, uh, and Buki hangs on to that eighth position. But yeah, you might be right. Axelson, for whatever reason, struggling at this part of the race, and it may prove to be uh, one lap too long for Eric. Let's see. It could be absolutely brilliant news for Edmondson uh, if he's able to snatch that fourth place away. Out of the hairpin come uh, Buki and Nicky Taylor who will be ruining that little bit of contact he had with Josh Martin at this part of the circuit midway through the race, dropped back to give the position back, but uh, had to give multiple positions back because Martin had been quite some way off the road. And uh, Nicky Taylor, therefore, now finds himself fighting for eighth place at best through the uh, Clervo corner. They go, Buki a bit wide, but just gets over to the inside to defend into Hawthorne. Taylor almost into the back of him, trying to just stick the nose in the inside through Hawthorne. He's on the grass there, and again, that was never going to end well. And so sensibly, Taylor backs out of it. Keep in mind that reverse grid, it's, uh, I believe, is it still top 10 or will be full reverse grid? I, I, I'm having a week off has fried my mind. Uh, sorry, a full grid, full grid. Full, reverse, yes. Oh, I was going to say that I'm actually fighting for potentially top, top two rows on the uh, on the grid. Of course, Nicky Taylor going and taking advantage of Dave Buki going very wide through Tower Bend as Josh Martin also goes wide out of it side by side through the Jim Clark S's. It's going to be Nicky Taylor on the right hand side, but Dave Buki's just Ooh. about managed to smash into the wall with potential help from Nicky Taylor, and that's one for the stewards, I believe, Andy. Uh, yes, let's move on, shall we? Leaders into the hairpin then for the final time. And Elliot Dalton Ayres all of a sudden having to come over all defensive. Scott Buckner has reeled him into the tune of eight tenths over the last couple of laps. It's not quite going to be enough. The chequered flag waves and it is a first victory of the season for Elliot Dalton Ayres. He converts pole position into the race win, uh, but it wasn't quite as simple as that. It must be said, he had to fight hard there with Scott Buckner and Max Bird throughout the early part of the race. They finished second and third respectively. Axelson fourth, Edmondson a lowly fifth. And this, the fight going on with Nicky Taylor and uh, Josh Martin again. These two, sorry, Carl Felvis, excuse me, uh, and Josh Martin. And Kyle Felvis is going to come out of that, despite that odd accident that he had at uh, the complex earlier on, with a strong place finish. Now, Dave, oh dear, Dave Buki is in the wall as he tangled with Reese Bell coming to the line and Nicky Taylor coming past him as well. And something tells me those two might not be exchanging Christmas cards come the end of the season. Ends up with Buki in 13th and Nicky Taylor just behind him in 14th. Well, a dramatic end to the race there. We'll be chatting to our podium finishers though after what was a very entertaining ninth round of the BRRC C BRRC Civic Cup uh, after this short break. The ninth round of the VRRC Civic Cup here at Croft certainly served us up plenty of entertainment, some really good racing uh, up and down the order, and in particular, actually, amongst the top three finishers who join us now in the commentary box. And it is going to be pole position converted into a race win for Elliot Dalton Air. He's got his first pole position earlier on in the night. And now, Elliot, your first race win of the season as well, but it wasn't all that simple, was it? Uh, no, uh, I got an all right start, I think. Max got alongside me, but I managed to fend him off. But then second lap, just got a bit of the bounce, which was terrorising everyone. And Scott managed to get through, but I pulled a dive on him, which managed to get me back into the lead and just defended from there. Yeah, that dive you made down into Tower Corner, let's talk about that, because I'm sure Scott probably felt that he had the inside line covered there, but you managed to go from the outside of him, dive to the inside, late on the brakes, tight line, and still got the car uh, stopped for the corners. I think it's safe to say you're confident on the brakes. Uh, not going to lie, it surprised me as well. It was, it was a pretty, <laughs> pretty good move, but yeah. 
Well, you might need to pull a few more of those moves out now in uh, in race number two, starting from the back of the grid as you will be. It's not going to be easy out there, is it? It's a narrow circuit, and that first sector in particular on lap one, uh, how cautious uh, are you going to have to be, do you think, to survive the opening laps of this one? I think quite cautious, to be honest. Yeah, I think you're probably going to be right, but you're going to have to get your elbows out at some point to uh, move up the order. Anyway, Elliot, uh, congratulations on that uh, first race win. Best of luck for race two. Elliot Dolphinaires then gets the uh, win in race number one. Second place was uh, Scott Bugner, though, an important second place, and he is chatting now to Jack. Yeah, championship leader, of course, as well, Scott Bugner. All in all, a fairly positive result for you. I know you would have liked and you tried to get that one extra step on the podium, but... All in all, a fairly decent haul of points. Yeah, good haul of points. Uh, you know, if, if, if I wasn't going for the championship, you know, I might have, you know, got my elbows out a little bit there, but it's not worth the risk. It's just, uh, you know, points, 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 and, you know, we've outscored Max again. So, uh, yeah, hopefully a clean race too and, uh, you know, finish on a high. I was going to say, did your attitude change towards the end of that race? Because we did see you really gunning for that victory on Elliot Dalton as at the beginning, but as soon as as the likes of your teammate Joel Lask li started lining up Max Edmondson, did you have to change slightly? Yeah, yeah, slightly. I could see Joel in the mirrors of Edmondson and I thought, go on, if you can just get him, that's another couple of points, etc. But all in all, you know, yeah, it's not worth the risk. It's not worth throwing away, you know, maybe possibly 10, 15 points when, you know, we've now gone up to maybe, I don't know, 20, 28, 27 points. So, uh, yeah, just give it up. Is it 30? Oh, there you go. So, yeah. Hopefully, just in this second race, you know, try and finish around Max Edmondson and uh, roll on Donington. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on getting that second position. Uh, very, very quickly, what's the aim for race two then? Because it's a little bit harder just to bank the points here. Yeah, just follow follow the guys through, really. I think I'm going to try and follow Max Bird and, you know, try and get through the field where we can, but not pull any dangerous moves, you know, just, just get through and, and get the points. Absolutely, it's tough around here at Croft, especially to uh, to pull through the order. But I'm sure you'll manage it, Scott. Good luck for race two. Yeah, congrats to Scott Bugner on that second place. Now, third place in the race was Max Bird. And Max, I'm looking back at your uh, results from the season. I kind of assumed that we would have spoken to you quite a bit. But actually, it's only your second appearance uh, on the podium this season. Got to be happy with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've been struggling all season with tyre wear, really. I'm pushing the car quite hard. Um, but yeah, great race. Great race with Scott and Elliot and hopefully do the same this one. Despite the fact that you've actually not been a, a regular on the podium, you've been quite consistent and that puts you third in the championship coming into tonight. And obviously Max Edmondson is struggling a bit at this point of the season. Second place could potentially be up for grabs as well. So I think this is, uh, for you as well, quite an important reverse grid race. If you score well out of this, you're right in the fight for that uh, P2. Yeah, definitely. I think... Obviously, Scott's going safe. I'm, I'm just going to be going all for it. So, you know, there's nothing to lose as far as I'm concerned. Um, obviously, I'm up there in the championship, but, you know, you've got to get your elbows out, really. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I think you will have to do that in this uh, reverse grid race. Uh, Max, congrats on the podium. We'll let you go and uh, uh, finish your uh, preparations for race two. Best of luck. Cheers. Thank you.